Hello everyone, this is Ladessa Sullivan, the artist and poet, also known as Candy Acid Rain. This is How To, acrylic pouring time-lapse painting, narrated by me in Art Tips. Um, I was using Liquitex, Basics, Floatrol, Alcohol, and Silicone. Right now I am showing you the paints and the colors that I used. I placed them in individual cups with um, Floatrol and alcohol and silicone. First I placed the paint in the Floatrol in the cup and then I stir that up really, really well. Then I put the alcohol in and stirred that up and then I put the silicone. These cups I got from the dollar store, so they're cheap and they're about eight ounces. And I also got the popsicle sticks or craft sticks from a dollar store, so cost effective. I'm showing you that I placed thumbtacks on the back of the canvas so that the canvas is pretty much level. This beginning portion, I that's the wax paper I put down, but this is the beginning portion where I am narrating the video, watching it back. But the second portion of the video, um, it'll be narrated by the actual moment. Right now, I am swirling in all of the colors all of the colors that's mixed with the Floatrol, alcohol, and silicone into a single cup and layering it. When you have smaller layers or like a lot of layers jam-packed, it um, will produce something that looks like my painting. But if you want larger blocks of color on the canvas, you would make those layers um, a lot larger by pouring more paint into the cup in each layer. You layer the, cord the colors um, according to how they're going to um, pour out onto the canvas. Basically, your first color will be at the top, and the last color you put into the cup will be closer to the um, the bottom touching the canvas. I'll explain this in further detail with text and um, a little bit of dialogue. Here we go. <laughs> Oh my gosh. It's amazing. Oh, it's not as watery as I would have wanted it to be. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> 
<laughs> wow. <laughs> Well, this could get a bit messy, can't it? <laughs> How fun. Wow, I'm really excited. So now I have to let this dry. Had a little mishap right here. Um, I don't know how I'm going to protect it throughout the night. Yay. Ooh. Okay, so I'm really excited. I didn't know what it was going to be with my color choices, but uh, I have some cells in here. I didn't want too much of that necessarily. Um, I wanted some, but uh, I don't have as many as I thought I would have. Um, I, I could make this section a little bigger by tilting it if I wanted to and really making that spread out, but I really love it like it is. So 
This is my first acrylic pour ever using, well, using um, Floetrol and alcohol and a little bit of 3-in-1 silicone and um, what else? And a little bit of golden glazing medium, which was my own recipe. Um, I added that addition. I just didn't want the colors to be too flat. It's the first try. I hope it dries good and I hope it doesn't pit or, um, you know, just uh, crack or anything like that. Um, so I guess I'm going to see. I'm really scared. I hope it doesn't get ruined. <laughs> Cross your fingers and uh, we'll be back in a moment with the final results. Okay, so uh, I changed it up a little bit wasn't necessarily on purpose but this side um, needed more I had to tilt it and then add a little paint to it but so you know it's going to change a little bit until it dries um, <laughs> it's so random because you really can't um, you really can't predict exactly what it's going to dry like or what's going to happen and so I'm really excited and really anxious at the same time hope it turns out okay and uh, without too many problems I did my best but um, we shall see I'll be back when it dries Okay, so this is the acrylic pour, and it is pretty much completely dry at this point. Not dry enough to where I can uh, paint a foreground on top of it, because it still needs to cure. However, um, okay, so this side here had a lot of metallics. Because of the lighting, you can't really see all of the details. As you can see, it really does dry... Um, not as glossy as it used to be. But still really, really pretty. And if this lighting didn't have a glare, you could really see it. There it is. Okay, so there it is. Um, now let me take some time to tell you a little bit about what I did. It may not be a complete step-by-step, -step, but I'll give you a hint. This was the Flood Floetrol that I got from Home Depot. It was only $6 for the quart and only $13 for the gallon. Now I think I should have got the gallon because, you know, it's important. And you might end up using a lot of it because you're going to love this. So, and the cups. This is where I mixed everything. Each paint color was in a separate cup. And then I placed those colors in the cup that I poured. Now what did I mix? I mixed about 25 milliliters of the Floetrol and about five milliliters of alcohol instead of water because this evaporates and uh, I really didn't have to worry about the paint not binding to itself because when you add too much water that could cause issues and what they call crazing which is basically cracking which is actually something you might want for a piece if you want texture and things like that you could seal it afterwards and make sure that nothing's going to flake off um, and it could be a useful technique to have a little bit of what they call crazing which is cracking you can buy a product that I don't have yet because it was out of stock like everywhere almost um, 
I did order it, and it will be arriving. They only had two left, and then when they called the warehouse, it's a long story. I couldn't get my hands on it, but it's called either GAC 800 or GAC 800. And that's to prevent crazing, which is basically cracking, and you add that to your mix. Now, I also added about five milliliters um, of paint. You don't really have to use something like this, but it was helpful to get an idea. I would say about this size um, and about the same thickness as well as your fingers would be enough paint. This, about this tall, <laughs> you know. Um, after a while, I don't think I'm going to be measuring it. I think I have somewhat of an idea. I might measure the flow of trial, but it's really based on how much the paint is flowing and how pourable it is. My paint was rather thick. I liked it um, like that, but maybe it could have been thinned down just a tiny bit. You can add about like five drops of water or something in there to thin it down a little bit or a little bit more of the alcohol than I, than I added so that the paint is even more fluid when you're tilting it. But if it's too fast, it's gonna like just spread really fast, go everywhere. So you don't want your paint to be too thin. Then, and I added silicone to every color, but next time I'm not going to. So this is one of the brands you could use. This is what I use, I got this at Home Depot. It was only three bucks. And then I used um, Liquitex Basics because that is the paint that I have in acrylic. I'm mostly an oil painter. And recently I just bought a bunch of stuff for acrylic and started working in acrylic more often. I've used it before, but I don't think I ever took it as seriously as I'm doing right now. Me personally, this was a personal choice that I did. It's not something anyone else recommended. Um, to my knowledge, but I used acrylic glazing liquid, um, and how much did I put in? I would say about a single squirt, not a hard squirt, but a squirt, like a line of it went into each cup. The thing about adding silicone to the paints, okay, um, Well, there's certain issues with silicone. It's oil, so it doesn't necessarily mix with acrylic. I don't see any oil residue on my piece, but you could clean your piece off with alcohol very lightly. You don't want to rub too hard or anything and rub off the paint or smear anything. But you could clean this down afterwards to make sure there's no oil residue left over because if you want to paint using acrylic, that is, on top of your piece or use using anything that is... Um, like a, a polyacrylic or a varnish or just anything that's this latexy water-based type of stuff, um, polymer stuff, then you need to clean this off. Now, for people who oil paint, you can oil paint on top of acrylic. You just cannot put acrylic on top of oil. So that's how that goes. So I could paint a foreground and oil no problem without having to clean off the silicone, okay, because it's oil-based. Why wouldn't I want to add it to every cup next time? Okay, because if you want to get more of what they call cells, which is these things that could get really big, these little circles, you don't have to use this, but this is supposed to help and aid in that. Now, the way things become cellular is going to change depending on what colors you place the silicone in. Um, I placed it in all colors. So you can see I have a little bit of these cells just kind of everywhere. And I stirred it in quite a bit, and that's when you're going to get the small cells. You can use a silicone spray, and you'll get, you know, maybe larger cells. Um, but you can use this and probably get larger cells if you just don't stir it in. Don't stir it at, um, at all. Just place it on top and drips or something and that'll probably have a, a more cellular result cellular being these my initial pour 
probably had more sales, but then I wanted more magenta, more blue, and I wanted to take some risk and have fun. It was, you know, my first time really doing this, and I didn't want to limit myself and be scared and, and settle on how it initially turned out, even though it was beautiful, maybe more beautiful. I wanted to take a risk because I'm trying to learn, and um, the last thing, you know, you already have a bit of anxiety trying something new. You don't want to make it worse, so the best thing you could do is rebel against that feeling and do something that could mess things up. <laughs> so, um, this is what we have here. If you want this to be shiny, you could use um, a varnish afterwards that's high gloss. They do have something, I don't know what it's called. Um, it's like, it's, I, I think it's something have to do with thick. I don't know. I can't remember the term right now, but there is something that's a very high gloss. Um, and it has the term thick in it. You could search that on Amazon or something. Um, you could also use a resin after you clean off the silicone. Now, silicone is optional. You do not have to use silicone. But you could use a pouring medium of some sort like this or the Liquitex pouring medium of which I haven't tried yet. And then alcohol. And another thing people do is they use like a little torch. You know, the one you use for like culinary things, um, creme brulee or whatever it's called. I don't, I don't know. I'm not that fancy. Whatever the case, that, that little culinary torch. Um, you could get it on Amazon for a good price. I'm going to buy one. I think I saw one there for 12 bucks. There was one for 9 And then there's ones that are like $25 and more. But, you know, I'm going to be frugal about it. And why? Because after you did a pour, not too close. You don't want to burn it. But you heat the surface. And you don't have to think about a blow dryer, of which could blow all that liquid around, obviously. Which is why I waited to use a blow dryer um, when it was already settled and tacky. And just not completely dry but you use the torch and then when you do that it makes the silicone or whatever you're using maybe even the alcohol it just dries it it makes the oil rise to the top it creates more cells um, really people use it to create more of these cells and larger cells as well that's what they do because it just brings it forward. Like there could have been a lot of cells here. That's why it looks like this. But I didn't use a torch. But I'm going to get one. And when it arrives, I will use one. Until then, I'm still going to do what I'm doing. And play and experiment with this. I am doing this. I You can leave this as an abstract piece. Now, I'm a visual artist. And... Um, I guess I already, I already have a catalog of work and I've been doing this for years, you know, just creating because that's just what I always did since I was young. And I do it as an adult and now I, you know, do it professionally. Um, but hey, you know, whatever, whatever that means. <laughs> but here's the thing. This is, for me, this technique um, it's mostly because I want to create elaborate backgrounds for something else. So while the, um, they have other pouring mediums, like I think the Liquitex pouring medium will have more sheen and dry with a lot more gloss. So if you just want to do this, um, I mean, you can use the Floetrol as well. It's more, you know you know, affordable, but, um, you know, you could glaze it over immediately if you want that high gloss and you want it to basically look like it did when it was wet. Cause that's what will happen. Um, if you use the right kind of varnish or resin, you can make it look like it, especially with the resin, you can make it look like it was when it was wet. If you just want this piece or, you know, if you just want your piece to be what it is, um, like this I like that this is not super shiny but I did add the glazing medium just for a little bit of sheen to make it a little satin I like that it's flat like this because it makes it easier for me to go over this with acrylic paint 
that doesn't have any flow with troll or the alcohol, anything that was in it and do a foreground. And then at the end of that, I could varnish everything and make the finish completely uniform. So this is fine by me. It's harder to paint on a high gloss surface, you know, like painting on glass or mirror or anything. It's going to glide all over the place. So having a little bit of like a satin finish or even a matte, that's fine with me. And it actually probably will work best for me given what I want to do. Also, the Liquitex Pouring Medium, I feel like it's quite expensive compared to this being a quart for $6. You might get a size similar to, to not even this really, but smaller. I mean, you know, um, they have the 32 ounce. I think it is. And, and that's a larger size, for instance. Okay, so, so that says everything within itself. <laughs> Um, you know, and then they have smaller sizes. So I think it probably works really, really good. Less likely to have what I told you was called crazing or cracking that I'm getting the GAC 800 for, um, or GAC 800 which is also in the brand Golden, and it looks a lot like this. Okay, the same kind of bottle. I'll show it to you when it arrives. So that's it. I really don't like this glare because I want you to be able to see this corner. It looks better. And then it's showing up as... And after I put a foreground here and perhaps varnish it, it depends on what it looks like after the foreground is added then these colors and all this stuff will pop again. I used about seven colors. I did the most, I know. Um, you really don't need that many colors. I was just going for it, you know? <laughs> I didn't know what colors I wanted and I just went for it. And initially, you know, you didn't see all this. As you saw in the video, I added more of the um, medium magenta, and this light permanent blue, and I think that's the color name here. And because um, I wanted more of that abstract, you know, I wanted some colors to really shine through and it merged together and it really looked like a natural formation, like a stone, which is beautiful, but you know, hey, listen, I wanted more of this color and I did what I wanted to do. I went for it, I added black over here and then when you move it around, it doesn't look like what I was doing when I added it, which is good because I did not like what I did, okay? So, yay! Oh, this video is getting really long, but, you know, it may be the only video that I do allow to be this long. But don't hold me to that because that may not be the case. <laughs> I'm about to do another one of these right now today. Sit this to the side and um, get that started because it needs time to dry and I intend on adding foreground. So, hey, got to keep it moving, got to keep it moving. That video might be long because I'm going to show you certain things I didn't directly tell you. I added tax to the back, okay? So this is one of those things I didn't directly tell you. So maybe I don't have to do it next time. I added tax to the back. Thumbtacks, they're dirty now, but they were clean. And it's a mess back here, okay, at this point because of all the pouring. But that's okay. Who cares? Um, I didn't hammer them in, but let me show you. I'm not going to do it now because I don't want to mess up my piece, but I should have to make sure they're all the same length. So, one, why do you do that? When you're pouring and everything like that, you want a little bit of space underneath here for your fingers to go. So, you can lift it up, turn it. You don't want this to really be touching your surface, of which mine is protected with wax paper. And then I put down additional wax paper or foil or something. Um, you don't want to have that issue where it's stuck to the thing or it's all funky and everything at the edges right here. It's already a little funky underneath, but you don't want this edge. You want to be able to hang this without a problem. 
and with it looking very neat. See how it just goes over the edge like that? I should have hammered those down. Why? Because you want your surface to be completely leveled and flat. Otherwise, it's going to be tilting one direction more than it did the other. I'm surprised mine didn't do that because I do not think it was perfectly leveled. But it worked out good enough, right? So next time I'm going to hammer those in just to make sure they're all at the same level of the canvas. And then I don't really have to worry because the table is what it is. I really can't change that. You understand? So yay. Okay, that's what I did. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. And I hope it helped you a great deal. I went searching a lot trying to figure out how to, you know, pour my acrylic and have um, the best results and I'm still not done learning. I did do a lot of research, but I haven't experimented and uh, capitalized off of all of that research, okay? So this is the method that I'm trying right now. I hope it helps you. I hope you try it out and I hope you have some fun with it. Oh, and before I forget, this is the username. I've had this since the late 90s. You can find it on Instagram, here, there, several places follow subscribe like all those things most of all speak to me comment let me know you know what you're thinking so long as it's respectful let me know if you want to try this if you have tried it if you have any questions about these materials if you i don't know just need a little bit of help or you just want to say that you know, you like how it turned out or that you saw the video and that you were here. Okay. Thank you for watching. Bye.